Hey peeps. Y'all you know, me and this tripod. It's just not like my other one. I don't want it's just so wiggly, what? <laughs> Y'all I really feel like I don't know. But anyways, I'm not gonna spend that much time on this tripod. Every time me and this tripod, we just we just don't be on the same accord, you know. But it's okay. It's okay though. So y'all, yeah. So how you doing, peeps? Doing good. That's good. How I'm doing? I'm doing great, y'all. I ain't got no complaint. No whatsoever. So, but for those that's not doing good, feeling good, whatever the case may be, we're going to send this prayer on up to my Heavenly Father. We're going to get her done. And that's what we're going to do. That's all coming through, though. So here we go. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We pray for any and everybody that is not feeling good in their minds, their bodies, their spirit, and their soul. We pray that you come through, you heal us, deliver us, and set us free from any and everything that's keeping us bound in our minds and in our hearts. In your son Jesus' name. And Father, we're going to lift up those that don't lost loved ones. And we're going to take a moment of silence. And Father, we pray that you comfort their hearts. We pray that you speak to their hearts. We pray that you strengthen their hearts and encourage their hearts in your son Jesus' name. And Father, we're going to lift up those that's in a hospital or at home bed bound. And we're going to touch and agree with them for full and complete healing and recovery. Because by your stripes, Jesus, we are healed. And no weapon formed against us shall or will prosper. And great is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Amen, amen, and amen. Got her done. Got her done, peeps. So, we're going to move right along because, look, um, I'm doing two reads today. Y'all know how, how I have to do this because if I don't do it like this, it ain't going to get done because if this just, I'm in the, in the season of my life. Like, man, I just, I do stuff. Man, I'm in that when I feel like it season. <laughs> and maybe it where I'm at is where I'm supposed to be. Because I'm always was about getting her done, getting her done. And so now it's just me doing all the things and my body be needing like a get her done. Oh, I hate to move you. But you're going to start doing a Chicago shake. So yeah. I don't feel like I want y'all up that hat on. Like, uh, let's go down a little bit. How about that? Let me bring y'all a little closer. Maybe that's better. So, yeah, y'all. Um, We're going to get into the weather here in the shy and the date. So, let's get it on. Um, let me cut the brightness up on my phone. Oh, that's a little too bright. Oh, let's she pose. There I go. I'm supposed to be looking at the web on Facebook on Instagram. My daughter posts something on Instagram. And I'm always trying to wake up. What she do? I don't see it. Where you go? Okay, I see, I see. Oh, she saw the play purpose. She liked the great performance with the amazing cast. Worth watching if you had a chance. Purpose was well, um, what's her name? Rashad. Felicia Rashad. It's a play. Oh, 22 minutes ago. She got pit. Oh, that is so. <coughs> That is so nice. That's a theater. That must be new. It's directed by Felicia Rashad by Brandon Jacobs Jenkins. 
the Kaz, Larkin, Jasper, all them characters. Elena, Ayana, Glenn, John, Harry Lennox, Tamla Tooney, and Cedric Young. Oh, wow. She gave them their flowers. I know that's right, girl. I like that. Hmm, that's child number two. She went to see a play today. And post the pictures on Instagram. And I just sent them when I opened my phone. But let's get on into the date. Y'all see April 18th. Y'all catch that 18th. Y'all catch that 18th. What time? Thursday. Thankful Thursday. What time is it? Hubby time. Hey. 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 Hubby turned that. Hubby turned 57 today. So now we both 57. Hey, 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 hey. I told him, we knocking these years out. What? Thanks to my heavenly father, y'all. And it's at 2.32 in the p.m. And let's look at the weather in the shaft. My daughter in Colorado says snow down there. Like, what the shenanigans? What the shenanigans? Well, it's still April. So it's saying mostly cloudy and cooler. Rain overspreading the area this afternoon. High 57. The real field is 65. Max wind gusts is 7 miles per hour. The sun rose at 6 so far this morning and supposed to set at 7.35. This evening. Okay, we're getting close to 8 o'clock. So today, high 57 Thursday. Tomorrow, high Friday 58. Saturday, high 51. Sunday, high 56. Monday, high 61. Tuesday, high 61. So basically, we in the 50s and the 60s. That's what it's looking like, y'all. But it's cool because it's still nice out there. Like you say, the real feel... It's uh, 65 when the hubby left. It felt good out there. So that's that. Uh -uh. I ain't got too much chit chat for y'all today because I'm knocking out all the reads. I got four books at the table. Hey, at the table. Hey. But anyways, so y'all, <clears throat> and some already happened to my voice. I feel like I remember doing something. Oh, I did it. I know why I'm losing my voice. Uh, I, I, I remember now. So, y'all, the hubby turned 57 today. Wow. And I was just thinking about that when I was doing the little song, song to my hair. I just untwisted and tried to fluff it out a little bit because I kind of like my hair. Like, I, I like it both. It don't matter. But, um, I'm like, okay, the gray is real. And my thing is, um, 57. I feel like, just like physically, how my body is going through different changes. A lot, it went on went through a lot of changes in these 50s, y'all. It hit me. But I rose. I rose to the challenge. I'm like, what? I don't hear to eliminate foods. I don't hear to tweak things. I don't hear to add supplements. I ain't never was that type that took vitamins. Like, what the what? Hey, it's getting real. And also, that's the you, I got inward inward changes happening. You know, hormones and all of that. You know, and I got outside physical changes happening. And I'm going to embrace all my changes, y'all, because I just think my Heavenly Father, I'm here to experience all what there is to experience with my body. You know, I'm not going to be ashamed of nothing. I'm not going to, y'all going to see me raw and uncut because I don't wear makeup. Most I do is lipstick. I ain't damn my gray hair. I love, I love my hair. It just, it's just, I never not love my hair, you know. So, 
when it started changing, I remember my daughter, child number five, used to scratch my head all the time. She was plucking my gray hairs. She was always plucking my gray hairs. I never dyed my hair. I never dyed my hair. And I ain't going to die because this is where I'm at. And this is where I'm supposed to be at. And I thank my Heavenly Father for allowing me to be here, to experience all the things, you know. And I want my daughters, by me having seven girls, I want my daughters to see it. You know, I ain't fit a, you know, like, they gonna remember mama, like, raw and uncut. You know, even with my peers, I kept it real with them. Like, man, especially when it was going out, the blood clots was real. And I be asking my daughters, like, y'all want to see this? Because I was, like, amazed myself, you know, because they females. If it's God's will, they going to get here one day. You know, like, we all females, you know. So I don't have no shame about nothing. I ain't, I ain't, it, it's just not, I never even thought of it like that, you know. So, yeah. Y'all gonna see me transform even more as I continue to get older and making YouTube videos. Cause you go back from when I first started, I ain't my hair look like this. I ain't look like this. It, I, I don't experience a whole lot of changes, man. For real, for real. But um, it's okay. Cause it's part of my life cycle. This is part of my life journey. And I thank my Heavenly Father for allowing me to experience it. So no. Raw and cut, you gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it to you. you. Get what I'm saying? But that's enough of that. And um, we gonna get into these reads because I got a lot of reading to do. And the first read is gonna be about comfort for the grieving heart, the grieving spouse's heart, hope and healing after losing your partner. But again, I say comfort for the grieving heart because I haven't lost my spouse. But again, I have experienced a lot of loss. And grief is grief, okay? So, some hit directly about spouses, but some just hit about grief, you know? So, we get ready to get into it. And here we go. Comfort by him, Gary Rowe. It's sunny now. Yeah, the sun is sunny. And I got my battery because I already know we gon' we fit to go through it. And now y'all know these um it's three parts to each three. And normally I try to do two. Cause we not gonna be two years in this book. Mm -mm. Nah, we not doing that no more. Life was life from back then. I don't know what I was doing. I don't even know. But anyways, I'm focused now. <laughs> ah! Okay, so this one is called I Have More Questions Than I Thought. I Have More Questions Than I Thought. Part 1 from the Grieving Heart. What about God? How does he fit into all of this? Couldn't he have done something? Ooh. If he is good, why doesn't he step in and prevent things like this? Why does anyone have to die? Let ask Adam and Eve about that. Really Eve, okay? I have more questions than I thought. Losing you has opened a Pandora's box inside of me. I don't seem to have any answers, only questions. And the biggest one of all is, why? Perhaps I'm angry at God. Eventually, the buck stops somewhere with someone, right? How could he let this happen? Maybe my idea of God is mold. I know I'm confused right now. Not much of anything makes sense. I'm full of ants and looking for a place to unload it. I'm irritable and cranky. I know that's right. That's how I used to be with my periods. Man, my fuse is incredibly short. Everything bugs me. I feel small, 
tiny. Life seems so big and overwhelming. Wow, that was good. Part two. Sooner or later, most grieving hearts wonder how God fits into all this loss and pain. The departure of a spouse generates a boatload of questions and the big one underneath them all seems to be why. Why is often too large for us. It points to something or someone larger and more powerful than we are. After our minds trace through all the possible reasons why the unthinkable could occur, many of us, many of us find ourselves pointing an angry finger at God. Some wonder, is it okay to be mad at God? Whether it's acceptable or not, many people are angry with the one they ultimately see as having the power to prevent catastrophe and is therefore, in the end, responsible for it. No matter what our feelings are and toward us whom, it's important that we're honest with ourselves about what's happening inside of us. Grief will be expressed one way or another. The same is true about being angry with God. If possible, it's best to find healthy ways to expel our angst and frustration. Tell God about it. Speak our feelings. Write them out. Draw them out. Mm. And we have a relationship with God. It might be good to remember that the quality of any relationship, the quality of any relationship is based on trust, well, and authentic, and authentic, we authenticity, authenticity, oh, and the quality of any relationship is based on trust and authenticity. If he is God. He already knows what you're feeling. Well, be real with him. Share. Let it out. Ask the questions. Our hearts need to express what's inside. I like that, y'all. I love that. I love it. I never, I never, I know we always come to the conclusion at the end of it, you know, asking God that. Why? But I like how he break it down like it's okay. In a healthy way. Ooh. But trust. Ooh. Trust in God. Ooh. Let me part three. Affirmation. When I'm angry with God, I'll be honest about it. He can handle my emotions. Ooh, that's powerful. I like that. He can handle my emotions. All right, man. That was deep. When I'm angry with God, I'll be honest about it. He can handle my emotions. Yes, he can. Got her done. Man, this was good. This was very, very insightful. Today is April 18th. Oh, my heart is turned. Well, I put 57 in this 24. April 18, 25. I'm going to put 57. 57A. 57A. Okay. Thursday. Man, I like that. This is a good book. He said he feel irritated, frustrated. And, um, what's the other one? Uh, uh, cranky. <laughs> Everything bugs me. I like that. Coming from a man, I like that. So, read number two. Well, the second one in the same book. And this one is called, I'm Not the Same. Here we go. Part one from the Grieving Heart. Since you left, I'm not the same. I used to love going places, being with people. I love fun as much as the next person. All that has changed for me. All the fun has been sucked out of the universe. Couples are everywhere. 
life feels heavy. Walking through my day is like slogging through waist deep mud. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to see anyone. I want to be alone. I'm hurting. I would prefer to hide. Mm. Everywhere I go, I feel people looking at me. I assume they're wondering how, how I'm doing or maybe what to say or do. It seems like I make everyone uncomfortable. My heart can't handle it. Uh. If I'm all alone, I don't have to worry about others. What they're thinking, what I need to do, how I'm coming across, etc. I'm not prepared for judgment or criticism. And I'm afraid that's exactly what I'm going to get. I like that. I like that. I like that. I'm not prepared for judgment or criticism. I'm afraid that's exactly what I'm going to get. Wow. I'm holding. I'm holding up here today. I revel in my sadness and miss you all I want. Your absence covers my world. The void you have left is, is massive. I miss you. Part 2. The loss of a mate stuns us. The emotional onslaught of sadness, anger, anxiety, confusion, guilt, and frustration can be intense. Life becomes heavy. Fun disappears. Laughter seems out of place, unloving, or even irreverent. The world is different. Some become overly aware of the people, especially the couples around them, and that they might be thinking about us and our grief. Being in public or with others socially can become difficult. We're not on the same page as everyone else, and we feel that keenly. For many, the safest and most logical thing to do is to go home and stay there. Wow and whoa. When we're wounded, we naturally tend to withdraw. That's so true. Instinctively, we know we need to heal. Recovering from deep traumatic losses requires time for us to think, feel, breathe. Now, recover, recovery from deep traumatic losses requires time for us to think, feel, battle internally, and adjust. And some of this is best done alone. Wow. Yes, we need other people, but most of us also need quality time alone when grieving. This balance is, uh, this balance is unique to everyone and is as individuals. As every loss in each person's grief process. Time alone can be refreshing and healing. Short times of solitude remove the clamor and noise of the world that might be less than helpful to us right now. The challenge is finding the balance, the balance of getting healthy time alone while staying connected to other people. In terms of what we need at any given moment, this balance between solitude and socializing can change in an instant. Grief is an unpredictable moving target. Our goal is to stay flexible and pay attention to what our hearts might need from moment to moment. Wow, that's deep. Part 3, Affirmation. I agree well by getting the alone time I need while staying connected to people that are useful to me. Wow. And whoa. Man, God's showing up and showing out. Because those that don't lost loved ones, 
man, you get an insight into to the process, to the understanding of the process. Man, that's deep because you're not alone. You know what I'm saying? Everybody agree different, but regardless of, it still hurt. It's painful. And you have, you experience all those emotions. And you have to find healthy ways to deal with those emotions during your process. So I got her done today, 4 18 24 Thursday. I got her done. And I, I haven't read from. And this is a good book. Very, very yummers. I haven't read a prayer out. And I know I'm doing it in sections. And I don't want to. No, I'm, I'm not fit to keep putting her to the side. Because she's feeling some type of way. Because I feel it. I feel her feeling some type of way. And so we fit to give her some attention. And what we praying about now is handling households and finances. Handling household finances. Yeah. That's the last time I read was March 28th. Ooh. And we fit to say our prayer because the last one I read was the introduction. And here go our prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who is present with us as we discuss our financial future together. We thank you for bringing us to this place in our lives. You have started a good work in us and we're performing until the day of Christ. We welcome you as we prepare to set up a budget that is pleasing to you and to each of us. Jesus is our Lord and our high priest, and we purpose to bring him the first fruits of our income and worship you, Lord our God, with them. Father, you are now over our marriage, over this union that we believe has been ordained by you. We confess your word over our life together and our finances. As we do so, we say that your word will not return to you void, but will accomplish what it says it will do. Therefore, we believe in the name of Jesus that all of our needs are met according to your riches in glory. We acknowledge you as Lord of our finances by giving tithes and offerings to, to further your cause. Father, on the authority of your word, we declare that gifts will be given to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall they be poured into our bosom. Well, for with the same measure we deal out, it shall be measured back to us. Well, we remember that it is written in your word that he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously mm, will also reap generously and with blessings. Lord, remind us always And we purpose to remember that it is you who give us power to become rich. And you do it to fulfill your promise to our ancestors. We will never feel that it is our own power and might that made us wealthy. Well, Father, do not, uh-uh, Father, not only do we give tithes and offerings to you, but we also give to those around us who are in need. Your word also says that he who gives to the poor lends to you. And you pay wonderful interest of that loan. We acknowledge you as we give for the benefit of the poor. Thank you, Father, that as you bless us and we bless others, they, they will praise you and give you thanks 
and bless others and a circle of your love and blessing will go on and on into eternity. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Got her done. That was a good one. I like that. I like that. Wow, that was a good one. 4, 18, 24, Thursday. Thankfulness. This is the prayer of a handling household finances. Keep God at the forefront of it all. So, I got a few more reads in this prayer. Let me see. Hmm. I really could be done. Really, I could. No, that's not I hear. What? Yeah. So we done with that one. And so the next one will be a whole new prayer. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep it moving. So y'all, I got her done. I gave you this, which was good. And the two I read was Um, I I have more questions than I thought, and I'm not the same. I'm not the same. And I gave you a prayer about handling handling household finances, the prayer. So we got her done, and I hope you enjoyed both of those reads, and they spoke to you on whatever level. And all I know is that God is showing up and he's showing out. You know, for those that need comforting and don't understand and got the wise going on, God can handle your emotions, our emotions, okay? So on that note, y'all, because I got another read I got to do. So on that note, um, today is Thursday. This is going to be my tomorrow, Friday video. So, I'm going to have to edit this. It's almost 3 o'clock for tomorrow. So, I hope y'all enjoyed those three reads. Two from the grieving heart and one from prayers that unveil much. And I hope they spoke to you on some type of level. In the name of Jesus. And so, on that note, y'all, I hope everybody have a blessed Friday, a safe Friday, a productive Friday. Get her done on whatever level. And if you can't, it's okay. Show yourself some mercy and, and some grace. And you like just being yo, I just don't feel like the season. Like me. You know, I do it when I feel like it. it it's no hurries today. You know, oh, I thank God I have arrived, y'all, in the name of Jesus. And y'all have a pr productive, no, a protective Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and enjoy your weekend. And y'all already know, I'll see you when I see you. And on that note, I'm out. Peace. Love, share some, and what? I holla. Bye, y'all.